fibrous or immovable joint they are our particular joint but the movement between the joints is not possible right then second kind of the joints they are cartilaginous joint there is a very slight movement between the joint right very slight and there are some movement which are not remarkable you cannot see that thing. and then third type there are pre movement between the joint so basically on the basis of the movement we define joint in three categories fibrous immobile cartilages or slightly mobile and synovial or fully mobile right so first let's 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 discuss about the fibrous or uh, immovable joint so uh, as we have already discussed that the skull is made up of multiple bones right and uh, you can see this upper part or we have already studied that uh, this frontal temporal right and uh, parietal and all that right so there are particular joints so their movement is not possible over there right so these are these joints are fixed joint right and these joints basically which are found in our uh, skull or uh, cranium we call it shutter right s u t u r they are called shutter the second joint is that the joint which is found between our tooth and jaw right so they are also fixed the third joint so we have already discussed that the lower part of our leg is made up of two bones tibio and fibula right so tibio and fibula so the joint between tibia and fibula this is the fixed and this is not moved so these are the uh, types of fixed joint what kind of question you will get basically the question will be the joint between tibia and fibula is and there will be four option so you will get directly from the example so what exactly you have to do right now you have to note it down the type of joint then their example so please note down the example don't go on the diagram just note down the example Understand? Note down the exam. You'll get the question from example. Also. Then fibrous joint or fixed joint. Note down stutter, joint teeth, tibia and fibula. Yeah, the second one is slightly movable joint. Hardly the question came from this part, but they can ask. So they are basically called cartilages. Fine. So there is a very slight move. So you can see that we have in the last class we discussed that our big backbone is but a small small bone, right? And those small small fragment of bones. So there are thirty three small bones which make the Are back. So those small bones between those small bones, there is a cushion-like structure. These cushion-like structure are made up of cartilage, right? So there are these cartilages structure, and in between there is a cartilage, gelatinous core between the cartilage, and uh, there is a fibrocartilage part. So this work like cushion, right? So the same way like this is the one one vertebrae, this is another vertebrae. between these two vertebrae there is something spongy right which can compress right so they are compressible joint that kind of the joints are formed right so these uh, the joint which are found in our backbone or spinal cord they are called cartilages joint right again as we have discussed in last class that our hip that hip is called innominate bone right so this one hip and another hip these both part are jointed with each other the joint between uh, this one so this is the pubic bone this is pubic bone this is pubic bone. between two pubic bone there is symphysis pubic right this symphysis pubic is also made up of this cartilages structure like which are present in our backbone right so they work like cushion so there is a movement but there is a very slight movement clear so two example symphysis pubis and between our vertebral column or between two vertebrae they are cartilages clear 
Now, a question I have seen that is very frequently asked question. Uh, before going into the third part, uh, tell me the part from where synovial fluid is secreted. Synovial fluid is secreted from. That was the question. This is a synovial joint. I have already written over there. So you'll get the answer. So, so they are freely movable joints. So those movable joints which are free to move, right? There is a lots of movement over there. So these synovial or this called freely movable joint, right? So this is one bone and this is another bone. Between two bones, there is a fluid, right? Between two bones, there is a fluid, and this fluid is called synovial fluid. This is the viscosity or density of this fluid is like egg white, right? Uh, this viscous part, right? It provides the uh, lubrication, right? Lubrication, it create it protects from the jerk. Suppose that you jump somewhere, right? And so there will be a jerk in our knee. So that will absorb by this fluid and it provides the lubrication, right? It provides the lubrication, right? So this is a bone, this is another bone. The head of the bone is made up of cartilage. These cartilages are called articular cartilage. This is very important part, right? Try to understand. Even this question has been asked. The cartilage which is found at the head of our movable bones. So this is called hyaline cartilage, right? Hyaline cartilage is a, a very clear or uh, transparent kind of the cartilage. It's protect or it prevent the friction between two bones. Otherwise, the friction will start between the bone, right? And that will degrade or erode our bone, right? So erosion do not take place. That's why articular cartilage is found. And between this cartilages structure, the second thing which is remains fluid, that is the that is called synovial fluid. This synovial fluid is secreted by this synovial membrane. This red color structure is called synovial membrane. So this synovial membrane it secretes synovial fluid, right? Which is the viscosity is like egg white, right? This synovial membrane, this is secreted by epithelial membrane. Synovial membrane is ep a secretory epithelial membrane. Means the synovial membrane is made up of epithelial cell, and the what kind of epithelial cell? They are secretory epithelial cell. They secrete the synovial. Is that clear, Aisha? Please note down some point. First point. The head of movable. First point, the head of movable bones are made up of head of movable bones are made up of hyaline cartilage. Hyaline cartilage. So let's stop. This cartilage is also this cartilage is also known as articular cartilage. Next point. Synovial fluid. It's secreted by Synovial membrane. Plus stop. The membrane is made up of the membrane is made up of secretory epithelium. Secretory epithelium. Or secretory epithelium. That's it. I said, is it clear? Crystal clear? This is important. Yes. Now, the type of synovial joint. 
there you have to remember only example only example you will find the lots of question but all the question have been asked only example so there are six type of joint they are synovial joint right means they are freely movable right so type of so how many type of joint there are three type of joint fixed slightly and freely movable freely movable are called synovial joint synovial joint are of six type right first first is pivot joint pivot joint is found right so here the movement takes place like this way there is a single axis and on this axis there is something which is rotating like this way right so example atlas and axis right atlas and axis right atlas this head bone and axis this backbone right so this is like this way move right radius and ulna so there will be two dimensional movement like this way and this way, right so two way movement radius and ulna atlas and axis so you have to note down the example second joint is called saddle joint saddle joint is found in our carpal and metacarpal so what are the carpals so carpal and what are the metacarpal right so you can understand what is carpal this wrist is carpal and metacarpal these right so between wrist and between these bones they are called thumb and hand so this part this movement right this part. right so this is called so there are two example of the saddle joint carpal metacarpal keep on noting down saddle joint hinge joint they just fold in single direction like you can open the your in your door normal door which is a present wooden door which is found at your room you can open it only one direction it will try to open in opposite direction it will break down the same way with like hinge joint they work like hinge right so in elbow elbow can cannot go forward right it can be folded backward right only in one direction so elbow knee and ankle right they are example of hinge joint please note down all three joint pivot saddle and hinge joint then we'll discuss the rest of it you will get a only example from the uh, example only question from the example yes now rest of the three plane joint so in plane joint you can see i have tried to show it there are flat 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 part right flat part uh, head of both of the joint right right so these plane joint they are called gliding joint as right plane joint are known as gliding joint right so they are found in carpal and tarsal so what is the carpal and what are the tarsal carpals are like this bones these are the carpals wrist is the carpal and tarsal which are found in the knee part right so carpal and tarsal are gliding joint that uh, or plane joint so there is a plane movement right there is a plane head head is plane head right this way then a uh, ball and socket joint ball and socket joint can move in any direction so that's why they are called multi axial joint right a uh, shoulder and hip then ellipsoidal joint so uh, metacarpal and phalanges between the metacarpal so what is the metacarpal carpal then met this is metacarpal this is carpal metacarpal and phalanges so the joint between this part and this part right so like this can move like any direction like single direction 
like hinge joint, they can move in only in one direction, right? So they are called lensoidal joints. Let me know when you when you note it down. Yeah. So here you have to remember only example. Now come to the conceptual part. Uh, what kind of the question have been asked? Let me tell you. Uh, you must have studied it before. Uh, like for example, what is the monomer of myosin? Very simple question. That question I've been asked. What is the monomer of myosin? Second question. The function of sarcoplasmic reticulum. These are the two sample questions of need exam. Have any idea? What is the monomer of myosin? Okay. Yes. Uh, what is the monomer of myosin protein? That is that was the question. Twice this question I've been asked. Monomer of monomer of myosin protein. Answer. Uh, next question was what is what is the function of sarcoplasmic reticulum? This question was uh, like repeatedly it have been asked in different ways. Sorry. Yeah, mono, very good. Monomer of myosin is miromyosin. And next, what is the function of sarcoplasmic reticulum? It is written over here. My screen. Calcium storage. Okay. So let's start. Let me explain you. You have to understand. In case if you don't get it, you have to ask me. And uh, feel free to ask me anything. Uh, skeletal muscles means those muscles which either they help in the movement or they connect a bone to bone or they help in the movement of bone. They are a skeletal. They make our skeletal framework. So first thing, these skeletal muscles they are under our control means they are voluntary, right? We can control with them with the help of our brain command. So they have a large nucleus and they are covered with so these muscles. They are a skeletal muscle fiber. So this muscle fiber is covered. It is. It have a large nucleus. You can see here is a nucleus, and it is covered by a membrane called sarcolem. So in place of plasma membrane, there is a membrane called sarcolem, right? So sarcolemma is a covering membrane. Inside sarcolemma, there are number of small fiber-like structures. They are called microfibers, right? In between these microfibril. There are mitochondria. They have number of the mitochondria because they require lots of energy for the movement and for the functioning. Now, this is the enlarged structure of this, this, uh, this, this part, this microfiber. 
so they have certain these blue color structures are basically sarcoplasmic reticulum the function of sarcoplasmic reticulum is storage of calcium due to storage of calcium these calcium help in the movement of these muscles right uh there are certain vertical uh, tubules so these are called t tubulins so basically t tubulins or lateral tubulins are called l tubulins right so sarcoplasmic may, may reticulum may be of two types lateral horizontal or vertical right so horizontal are called l tubulin and vertical are called t tubulin so basically they both are the part of sarcoplasmic reticulum and their function is storage of calcium now come to the myofibrils right this is a small small fiber as you can see this is a single fiber they are called myofibril so myofibril so they are dark they are made up of dark and light band right they have a myoglobin what is the function of myoglobin even this question i think that's why i have made the star so they are muscular hemoglobin they function like they are a carrier of oxygen they are functionally they are hemoglobin but here they are found in the muscles that's why we call them myoglobin right they remains attached to skeleton and cal potassium is the most abundant component they store glycogen that is a storage food they contain atp they have sarcoplasm the protoplasm which is found inside they are called sarcoplasm they contain many nucleus so this when uh, when any uh, cell contain multiple nucleus this is called syncytium right or one more thing i want to ask you in fungi you must have seen there are particular hypha or cell which have more than two nucleus multiple nucleus means it may be handed nucleus what we call that stage a cell with the multiple nucleus what we call that condition if a cell have aisha cell with one nucleus normally we call it monokaryotic yes yes if cell with two nucleus we call it dikaryotic yes yes if cell is three plus means multiple what we call it means what we call it multinuclear state so this state is called kinocytic condition remember or not yeah so note it down kinocytic state right here we are using the term syncytium state right syncytium right the same thing is called kinocytic condition so kinocytic condition means a single cell with the multiple nucleus right so you can see that these fibers are you can have, you have to note down these points these all points so please note down like the question you will get calcium potassium is the most abundant not calcium is most abundant potassium is most abundant glycogen is stored that you know but they are multi nucleus then we will study the structure of single microfiber which have dark and light band
Now the story starts from uh, they are micro. This is the structure of microfiber. So they are a dark band and so look, these are the lighter band and they are the darker band. So the darker band where the dark bands are there, there is a gap, right? And where the lighter bands are there, so these lighter bands are made up of two things, right? Uh, light and dark band. They are made up of uh, two two kind of protein. So basically, this green color structure, which is called actin protein, and this uh, purple color structure is called myosin protein. So basically, they are these muscles or these microfibrils are made up of two type of the protein that we need to understand, right? So alternatively, there are actin, then myosin, then actin, then myosin, then actin. Actin is a thin filament. You can see from the structure only there are thin filaments, right? And myosin is made up of thick filament. So there are two kinds of the protein, actin and myosin. Now study about the actin and myosin. Basically, this actin or thin filament are made up of three types of the protein. What are troponin, affectin, and tropomyosin, right? So first we will study about the actin. Let's discuss about the actin, right? Wherever you get stuck or wherever you get confused, you have to ask me, I'll tell you again. So actin is made up of three types of protein. So you can see this F actin is filamentous. This green kind of filament are called F actin. F stands for filament. So this is called F actin means filamentous actin. So this F actin is made up of some globular structure, right? The single unit is called G actin. So there is a thread of G actin, right? There is G actin. G actin means globular actin. So there is a thread of G actin that is called F actin. Did you got this thing? So yeah. This green color structure, this green color, only green part, this green color filament, light green color filament is called affectin, means filament actin, and the single unit of affectin is called GM, right? So if somebody asks you, or uh, if question asks you, what is the monomer of affectin or filamentous actin, your answer will be G actin, right? Again, uh, this G actin, there is a sum dark green color structure, this is called active cell. And there is this yellow color thread, which is running parallel to affectin, right? Parallel to affectin, this is called tropomyosin. And in between, there are certain structures, they are called troponin. So that is the structure of actin or actin, right? Now come to the myosin. So myosin is made up of multiple Myosin monomers. So monomer of myosin is miromyosin. A miromyosin is a dimer. Dimer means this is made up of two protein structure, right? So what is the uh, what is the monomer of myosin? That is miromyosin. Miromyosin is a dimer of protein, right? These two dimer they are they remains uh, entangled with each other like two snakes are entangled with each, other, right? They are. Uh, entangle with each other, right? So, this part is called tail part, this part is called neck part, this part is called head part. Now, try to understand. The actin protein have, the actin protein have myosin binding site. This myosin protein will have actin binding site. So, try to understand. This head have two things, actin binding site, and ATP binding site. In actin binding site, this actin protein will attach, right? And in ATP binding site, the ATP will bind and break down and provide energy, right? This is flexible neck part. So this is the actual structure of actin and myosin. Clear? You need not to note down. I will tell you what you need to note down. Here you have to understand only the concept. Tell me, I said, is it clear or not? Not clear, I'll tell you again. Yes, Now, uh, the next part, I have tried to understand with the help of uh, sliding filament tool, how this uh, muscle work for, uh, first, first, try to understand how this muscle work. Yes. Yes. 
then i will explain with the help of my own handwritten notes so how the sliding filament maha means how the muscle sliding takes place so this is the video sliding filament theory explain how the muscles when you know when when we we stretch muscle right contract or relax so when we contract what happens actin and myosin fiber they slide like this and muscle contraction takes place so suppose that i am folding my hand so actin and myosin they slide over each other and like this this is the muscular contraction energy is spent during the contraction that's why you know we need to put some power and whenever we relax muscle so i am putting hand, my hand like this way what will happen they will slide over each other say so they will slide out when we when muscle contract they slide in when muscles uh, relax they slide out right that's how the sliding filament theory works so try to understand look actin and myosin fiber this blue color structure are actin red color myosin you can see thin filament and thick filament look they are sliding in right then the muscle contraction will take place when they will slide out muscle will get relaxed that's how the muscle contraction and muscle relaxation takes place now from where the masses come masses come with the help of a neuron which get attached with the yes the masses come from a neuron right this neuron right and there is a plate right this junctional plate so there is a muscular muscular and neural plate right so there is a junction between the muscular and neuron so neuron bring the order and order of contraction so whenever neuron bring the order of contraction what happen basically sarcoplasmic reticulum they start releasing the calcium and this yellow color structure are called calcium and right now try to understand so when masses will come the sarcoplasmic reticulum which have already stored calcium they will release the calcium calcium will come try to understand now what will happen calcium have arrived when the calcium have arrived calcium will attach with the troponin protein when calcium will attach with the troponin protein troponin and tropomyosin will change their structure due to change their structure the active site of active site of actin protein means g actin active site of g actin will open this dark yes these what are these active site they are myosin binding site i have already told you that these myosin protein have actin binding site and actin protein have myosin binding site and they will bind with each other at that site only so this is myosin binding site well myosin protein will bind atp will attach atp will atp will come and attach with atp binding site and there it will break down into adp and pi means phosphate and that's how the energy will be released atp yes broke down into adp this adp will provide this due to this energy atp breakdown energy will be provided yes try to understand this energy have help in two places first the binding between actin and myosin try to understand this is myosin binding site there is actin binding site both have binded and after binding it have slid it back yes so what was the function of atp with the help of atp energy is utilized first they have make the bonding and the second they help in the sliding of filament right sliding of actin filament extra energy will be used by them to come back at their original position atp came this is the atp is enzyme extra energy will bring them at their original position that's how they will 
slide on the myosin and actin, right? That's how the sliding takes place. Again, ATP broken down. They will make the bond. They will slide over. That's how the sliding filament works. We work. Got it? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now come to at my nose. Now you will understand. Here you have to note down. So the component I have already told you thin filament are made up of actin, tropomyosin, and tropin. Right. And thick filament are called myosin filament. This is the structure of what miromyosin. So miromyosin, this tail part is called LMM. This question has been asked. That's why I have used the term LM. LMM means light miromyosin. This tail is made up of lighter part of protein, right? That's why this is called LMM, light miromyosin. This head part is called HMM. Why? Because this is made up of heavy protein. The full form is heavy miromyosin, right? There is a actin binding site where actin will bind and there is an ATP binding site where ATP will bind. One more thing, ATP binding site have enzyme that is called ATPase, which will break down the ATP. ATP ATPase. This ATPase enzyme is present at ATP binding site. It will break down the ATP. This rise or uplifted part is called cross arm. This is made up of head plus neck. Myosin monomer is called miromyosin. It is made up of two polypeptide chain, helically arranged. Head work as enzyme, ATPase enzyme. It can break ATP into ADP and release the energy. Is that clear, Aisha? Yes, Better, I would like to say you that you can take this screenshot or from the link, you can note it down, whatever, wherever you feel comfortable, or whatever you feel comfortable, you can do that, right? Then, uh, myosin polymer are made up of miromyosin. Again, the same thing. Tail is made up of light miromyosin, LMM. Head or globular head is made up of heavy miromyosin. This uplifted part is called cross arm. The structure of actin filament, affectin, tropomyosin, and troponin. Now try to understand. The structure you have already understood. Affectin is called filamentous actin. It is made up of two chain of G actin. So this globular part is called G-actin. G-actin is a monomer of F-actin. Filamentous actin, the mono G-actin. F-actin is, or you can say F-actin is a polymer of G-actin. This is the structure of G-actin protein. This is a globular protein. This globular protein have a particular site, which is called myosin binding site. We have already seen in miromyosin, there is actin binding site. This tropomyosin, again, this tropomyosin, it is a fibrous protein. It runs close to the affectin. Then troponin protein. Troponin is protein is present on the tropomyosin at short distances. It is made up of three subunit. It has three subunit. T subunit, C subunit, and I subunit. T subunit is called binding site for tropomyosin. C subunit is calcium binding site. An I subunit is inhibitory site. It inhibits. This question has been asked. C site, C site, I site. Please note down my proponent. The question has been asked. C site, C site, I site from all of them. You will get the question in previous step question. Please note down the structure of proponent. Group.
Okay. Done. Now try to understand how the sliding filament theory works. That mechanism is is uh, important. You know because the the question has been asked on the mechanism as well. Try to understand. First, the command will come for the contraction of muscles, right? Suppose that I want to contract my hand, so the command will come. That is called impulse. Impulse will arrive. Impulse will ally arrive the junction. But there is a junction between the fiber and neuron. I have already. This is called motor play, right? This is also known as the neuromuscular junction. So first thing, what will happen when 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 the, uh, the impulse will come? The first thing which will happen, there are certain vesicles. So this calcium ion will start coming inside the neuron. Try to understand. This calcium they will start absorbing calcium ion from outside. Where the from outside from extracellular fluid (ECF). When calcium ion will uh, will come inside, there are certain vesicles which are filled with acetylcholine, which is neurotransmitter. These vesicles will start moving downward. And this vesicle will burst, right? Burst and release of neurotransmitter due to entry of calcium ion from extracellular fluid, right? This acetylcholine will burst. Now there is a gap or there is a plate that is called motor plate. That plate is between this muscle and your neurons, right? There is a plate. This acetylcholine is a type of neurotransmitter. It's a type of chemical which is called neurotransmitter. This acetylcholine. Will be received by the receptor. Protein receptor are present at the surface of these sarcoplasmic sarcolemma, right? This membrane. They will receive the acetylcholine. Due to receiving of the acetylcholine, this sarcoplasmic reticulum will release the what? They will release the calcium ion. When calcium ion will be released, so second step is that sarcoplasmic reticulum. They are storing calcium ion. They are also called L-tubulin. Calcium ion release when acetylcholine reaches to the reticulum. Third step, due to release of the calcium ion, these calcium ion will bind at the C site of the troponin subunit. Right on the side. C site of the troponin subunit, which is attached with the tropomyosin. Right? Troponin and tropomyosin they have masked the active site of the actin. Right? Calcium ion will bind to the C site. They will lead the change in conformation or structural change of tropomyosin. Troponin and tropomyosin. The structure will change. Active site will open. When the active site will open, they will make bond with the myosin protein, and that's how sliding filament theory works. Go through with it and tell me if you have any doubt in this diagram. This is the self-explanatory diagram. It have explained everything. It I I have made it by myself. This diagram. It is not from any book or something else. I have tried to understand on the base like complete phenomena on the same same page. So go through with it, Isa, and tell me if you have any doubt. And this is all about this chapter. But you must have the conceptual clarity of this book.